Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at this 2007 Sunlight Skyhawk camper, but first, check out this sweet campsite. Alright folks, we're going to start with the exterior on this side. This is the driver's side of the camper. Here we have an outside shower with hot and cold water knobs, but there's no hot water in this camper. It comes out like this. Super convenient to have on the exterior of your camper. Right underneath where this white hose is, that is where your gray water comes out. There is no gray water tank. So you just connect your hose to a connection up underneath and you can have it drain into a five, six gallon jug there. Um, currently it's going to the ground because I'm not using soaps, it's just water. Uh, but when I do use soap, I'll, I'll drain it to the jug there. Next to that, you have a city water connection. This goes directly to your tap. It does not go to a water tank, um, which, which is fine. Uh, the only way to fill your water tank is right here. And this is a non-pressurized fill spot. So, um, I mean, it works all right sometimes, depending on where I'm parked. I'll just fill the jug up, hold the jug, and fill the tank there with the non-pressurized. Right here is your exhaust for your propane furnace. This is your refrigerator access panel. You've got your shore power here. Right behind here is your propane. This is a 20-gallon, 20 20-gallon, 20 20-pound 20 tank. And like I said, this runs, you know, the, the fridge which is three-way fridge. It runs the furnace and the stove top, two burner stove. We have it secured down with some chains to some, what do they call it? Torque, torque lift uh, frame attachments here. But that's all the driver's side, so let me take you around to the passenger. Okay, so there's not a whole lot going on on this side of the camper. Uh, you have a window running almost the full length of the camper and it pops out from the bottom for uh, ventilation and it can be open during the rain, which is nice. One thing I forgot to mention is that when the top is down, it's secured with these latches right here. There's little connection points up there and they just latch down on top. Um, there's four of them, one on each corner and that's how you secure the top of the camper. So let's go around the back. All right, around the back here, there's a couple things I wanna point out. What I like about this particular camper and some other ones have this feature as well, is that you have access panels to the truck bed compartment where you can store things like a, like I keep an axe, a saw, and a few other things in there. And you close it and you can lock it. Um, for this camper, I don't have a hitch attachment or anything like that for a step stool. I literally just have the cheapest little stool you can get. Which works perfectly for me because when I'm not using the camper, it just stores right there on the floor. When I park, I just pull it out, set it down. And it works. As you can see, this one has a screen door as well as a, uh, an insulated hard door as well. And that is about it for the exterior. So let's just hop inside and go through that. Okay, so coming inside the camper. As you can see, for a mid-size truck camper for a Tacoma, it is very spacious in here. All right, so we're gonna to start to the right and we're just gonna work our way around to the other side. So on the right side, as you can see, we have a couch running the full length of the camper. It's got two foam cushions, one in the bottom, one in the back. And then underneath, this slides out to make a bed. You just take that back cushion, you'll lay it down here and you have another bed for a shorter person. Up top, we have some shelving. That brings us forward to the bed. So this is not a full-size bed, full as in 
you know, your, your double bed, what have you. It's a few inches more narrow, but you can still fit two people. My wife and I have slept up there and it was just perfectly fine. Under your bed, the little handle here is where you have all of your storage. And I have to hold it up because my down comforter on the top is too heavy for the struts. But I've got some utility gear, clothing. Uh, that big blue thing is actually a chair. And pretty much everything I need can fit right up underneath. Uh, under that pink dog jacket is a table. So that table fits right into those two post holes and it runs almost the entire length of the couch. So two people can eat side by side perfectly fine, which is really nice. Again, especially on a camper of this size. And check out those views from this campsite. It's amazing. Okay, so right here is the mechanism that controls the raising and lowering of the top of the camper. There's a little crank that goes in here, and depending on what way you crank it, the top will either go up or down. On the ceiling, we've got smoke detectors, we have LED lights, and the bed has a small little curtain for privacy. All right, just below that, we have a window pass through to the truck, uh, inside of the truck if you need it. This little stick I have to prop up that when I have it open because it won't stay because the comforter is too heavy. All right, under here, this little compartment is where your water tank is. It's right over there. I believe it is a 16 gallon tank, but do not quote me on that. I'm not positive. Next to this, there's typically a battery that you can put here. There used to be one. As you can see, there's the connections there. When I purchased this camper, it did not come with a battery. And I'm still trying to figure out what I wanna do for the electronics, how I wanna uh, handle that situation. I don't think I just wanna grab a a battery, hook that up and, and run with it because it does have a converter charger, not an inverter charger. And I would much rather have an inverter charger than this uh, converter. This is also a very cheap brand. These are known to fail so uh, and destroy batteries. So that's kind of why I have yet to put a battery in there. I will talk about how I handle power in just a few minutes. But let's put this back on. Well, let me tell you this. Since I don't have a battery in here, what I do store in here while I'm traveling is the leveling blocks. They'll sit in the back. And then the portable battery pack I have for power fits in here as well. All right. So on the left side, let me sit on the couch so you guys have a better view. This is where... All of the systems are. So we just briefly talked about that. And here is just a little storage compartment. I keep a little solar panel, uh, some gaffers tape, some books, things like that. And there's room for more items if I so choose. Above that, I just have a little cubby hole full of full of things. So as you see here, this USB and battery bank, what this does is that runs the fans I put up in the ceiling. This did not come with any fans, just a vent. And I want it to go as cheap as possible. So rather than getting a fantastic fan or a max air fan, I chose to take two 12 volt computer fans and screw those into a board, Velcro those up there, splice the wires to a USB and then what this does is takes 5 volt USB power from battery bank turns it into 12 volts to power those fans and that moves just enough air to keep this camper from getting hot while also being very power efficient I don't necessarily need a max air or fantastic fan for something this small so that is what I've done for 
um, for that. As you can see, lots of counter space on top of the fridge. Speaking of the fridge, it is a Dometic three-way It runs off of 12 volt, shore power, and propane. Currently it is on propane because I'm boondocking. To the left of that, we have a two burner stove. It's manual, so you gotta manually light it, which I actually prefer. You have a cutting board integrated into the countertop. Underneath that is access to the top of the furnace. Now this did not come standard. Let me move this. You can see the screw holes. There used to be a different stove here that was a burner burner. And I think this way it's much more convenient and it adds a little space here for you. Uh, standard cheap RV sink. And then, as mentioned previously, that just goes directly out that gray water line to the jug that is outside. Above your kitchen area, you have a little bit more storage for some food or whatever you want to put in there. This right here, I keep my charging cables and other battery packs, um, stuff like that. Little bicycle light that I can turn on to help illuminate this when I don't uh, want to have the shore power or the full camper electricity working. All right, so just below your sink and your furnace, we have some outlets. Uh, a level indicator, your switch for your uh, water pump. We have a couple, well, one drawer for your silverware and such. And then this one folds down. And then that's where I've got pots, pans, and other miscellaneous items stored in there. Next to that, you have your propane furnace. Below that, you've got a little fire extinguisher. And then this compartment here goes right into your truck bed and that's super convenient so if you're coming in from a hike or something like that and you have some muddy shoes you can just toss them in there and they will be protected from any rain because of the overhang from the camper more outlets um, propane detector and then there's another truck bed access hatch right there Okay, so to address the power situation for this camper, right now what I have is the shore power cable is connected and taped in there. That's running right around the camper and coming out the other side over here. It's coming down, and this is the portable uh, battery pack that I was telling you about. I got this three, maybe four years ago. It's from Renogy. And uh, it's a 400 watt hour battery with an inverter. So you can do all your DC stuff here. And it's got two uh, 110s on the side. So I just plug the short power right into this. And then that charges with this 100 watt foldable solar panel. And it works okay. It's not ideal. It's pretty small. Um, the fridge uses about... Oh, I'd say 125 watts of power if it's on electricity. And uh, it runs that little battery pack down quickly. So if I'm boondocking, I have to be on propane. Everything else, it runs just fine. The water pump, the LED lights, all that good stuff, it is more than adequate to run that for a few days. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Again, it's not ideal, but it works for the moment. Okay, so one thing I wanted to talk about real quick before I end the video is that, you know, for years I have been looking at the four-wheel campers and then other uh, truck bed pop-up camper styles uh, for like, you know, that are more designed for overlanding and things like that. But the price was just, it's its a lot to swallow. I mean, for a, for a brand new four-wheel camper Hawk model, you're looking, I think they start in the low 20s, something like that. So once you configure it, uh, you're probably looking mid, you know, 25K, something like that for a four-wheel camper. This guy I found a month ago on Craigslist, three grand. It has got everything you would need, and you're saving a ton of money. And 
you know, you might be thinking three grand, there's got to be something wrong with it. Every single system in this camper works just perfectly fine. There's no rot. There is no water leaks. I've checked it out thoroughly. Um, so you are saving a ton, a ton of money. Um, so it's just something to think about. There's, there's always, you know, options out there and it's, you know, just, just look around, uh, hit up Craigslist. I know these things are getting hard to find right now, but, uh, if you're persistent, you can actually get away with a killer deal.